Hello and welcome to Spotlight. This is Art Cortonell reading Don Pierce's Bible Prophecy in today's World News. This is part 8 in our series. In our last Spotlight, we looked at Russia seeking to cooperate with Israel in her development of Israel's energy resources. We now look as she eyes other resources in the region. The US Geological Survey and the Leviant Basin published in March 2010 indicate the area holds a mean approximation of 1.7 billion barrels of recoverable oil and a mean of 122 trillion cubic feet or roughly 3.5 billion square meters of recoverable gas. As we can see from the background map, it covers the coastline not only of Israel, but Lebanon, Syria and Cyprus. Okay. Following the success of Israel's exploration off her coasts and also in Cyprus's territorial waters, there are indications of vast reserves. Lebanon has woken up to her share. With a state of war in Lebanon, with Hezbollah now fighting Syria, backing Assad's men, while other Lebanese are backing those opposed to Assad, we can see that Lebanon is being torn apart. Nevertheless, the potential prize is such that they are pressing ahead to auction exploration blocks off her coast. Bids were invited starting May the 1st for a few of the blocks. There has been great interest from around the world, including three Russian firms, Lukoil Overseas Lebanon, Ronsneft, and Novatech. Bids finally close in November, and Lebanon is hoping to award contracts in February 2014. We shall have to wait and see how successful Russia's bids are. There is also the strong likelihood that when the dust dies down in Syria that there will be gas and even oil to be found off her shores. The original map, which led to this flurry of eastern Mediterranean exploration, clearly indicates the possibility of Syria having energy wealth. The arrow on the map marks where Tartus is, the port that the Russians have a strong interest in. Control of that port puts Russia in a favourable position to be able to help Syria in some future exploration. Incidentally, Russia announced in mid-February that she was going to start enlargement work at Port Tartus so that it could handle bigger vessels including aircraft carriers. Russia also announced her intention to have a permanent naval force off the shores of Syria by 2015. In May of this year, she had at least a dozen warships patrolling off the shores of Syria. Clearly, she has plans to be in the area whatever befalls Assad's government. Also in the region is Cyprus, whose maritime borders reaches into the Levant Reserve with huge potential energy reserves and, as the country is in economic difficulties, it needs help in developing her newfound fields. Russia can see the potential. It is interesting that Russia should have such a strong traditional ties with this tiny little island. It is because Cyprus is a tax haven for wealthy individuals and many wealthy Russians have taken advantage of her low tax rates and no questions asked banking regime. The EU drastic measures that they insisted Cyprus should take to ensure an EU loan has meant that many Russian depositors suffer quite a financial haircut, forfeiting a substantial percentage of their deposits to fund the needed loan. This has made Russia all the more determined to spite the EU for their actions. She has already eased the terms for the repayment of the 3.3 billion loan she made to Cyprus in 2011 and is eyeing acquiring energy distribution assets in Cyprus as the government seeks to raise much needed money through a series, series of privatizations. Interestingly, according to a report in the Cyprus newspaper, Famagusta Gazette on the 23rd of May, Cyprus and Russia have agreed to deepen cooperation in defence matters as Moscow requests facilities for Russia's naval vessels. 
The two sides agreed to update a defence cooperation agreement and sign another agreement to facilitate Russian citizens in the case of an emergency evacuation. Russia is seeking to establish other accessible bases in the Middle East. Tartus is unable to handle larger warships until the port has been enlarged. It makes sense then for Russia to seek other ports that she can use. She would be willing to pay a considerable sum for secure naval access. Greece also is a potential source of energy wealth and, like Cyprus, the country's near bankruptcy, has prevented Greek firms from exploring the potential assets off her coasts. Russia's Gazprom is actively trying to acquire the Greek gas firm Depa, one of the companies that Greece is selling off to raise money to help her shaky economy. With Gazprom making the only bid, it seems a foregone conclusion that Gazprom will be the successful bidder. We should know any day now. This would give Gazprom a valuable foothold and perhaps enable her to start investigating of Greece Energy's reserves. We see Russia's tentacles seeking to reach further and further into the eastern end of the Mediterranean seizing the opportunity while Europe is so distracted with her financial problems. We certainly live in interesting times. In our next spotlight, we shall see why a Russian warship docked in an Israeli port for the first time in history, and why, under Pope Francis, the Roman Catholic Church may be on the brink of securing favourable terms from Israel. We ask the question, how does Russia's involvement with Israel link to a possible development under a new pope? Join us again next time for part 9 in our series when we consider further how Bible prophecy is being fulfilled by World News Today.